Welcome, everybody, to another episode of A Shot of Reviews on this lovely uh, 4th of July weekend. I want to say happy 4th of July weekend to everybody out there. This is your host, Jarrell, and I'm with me, my co-host, Stu. Uh-huh. There he is. And here on this show, we like to give you uh, a little bit of the news that's going on, as well as friendly conversation. But the most important thing of all is we like to get drunk. Oh, Also, we do album reviews as well on the side. We got a couple few albums that are coming out this week or a few weeks ago that we're going to tell you what we think of them. So how are you doing right now, Stu? I'm all right. A little tired. Yeah, because... Uh, slept, slept, slept a little late. As usual. We had the 4th of July, you know, here. We celebrate. I hope you guys out there ate all the hot dogs and uh, cookouts and burgers and fireworks and all that stuff that you guys do. But uh, how was yours, Stu? How's your week going so far? It's good, yeah. Can't complain. You got uh, Friday off, right? Um, Friday the third. I get every Friday off. So. Oh yeah, so it was just a regular old yeah, day. Yeah, actually, uh, other people on my work actually got a vacation day, and I got screwed out of a, a vacation day, so or a, or a holiday. Mm. So that kind of sucks, but you got to go in there blazing, guns blazing next time. Yeah, get, get disgruntled. Gotta, yeah, I got to complain. Do something. Yeah. Complaints get you nowhere. It's all about heavy artillery, you know. It's your God given right as an American and do something about it. I don't know. But uh, what, I like to say this is my favorite holiday, not because of the uh, the drinking and the, um, I guess, the food and all that stuff and the warm weather and the, really the kickoff of summer is Memorial Day, but this is when it, you're in like the, like the heart or like the, uh, the bowels of the whole summer vacation or what have you. But uh, one of the things, we, a tradition we have now <laughs> is... We have celebrated independence by streaking. We did that last year. As a little bet I had with a stew that he wouldn't run across my street naked. <laughs> and sure enough, he did it for the $10. And I didn't. I wanted my money back, so I had to go get that money back from him real quick. And uh, another thing that I like about this uh, 4th of July is... Well, let me get to real quick what we do also when we do shots. We have a little John lets us know when it's time to do shots. And every week we have a different... Uh, liquor of the week to do shots of, but today, one of my friends was nice enough to make some jello shots for us, which you'll see on the on the page right there that I took a picture of. They probably look prettier than they taste. Yeah, well, what do you mean? They're they're no, shaped like the, stars. I'm not but... the biggest jello fan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you don't like jello shots. Well, I, I like alcohol, so. So you got to work I, I your way into like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, these ones are shaped like stars, red, white, and blue. So she was somehow able to. I guess with some cookie cutter or something like that, shaped them like star. They look they look pretty good, and but there's Bacardi inside, so I guess that's what we'll be drinking tonight. So when Little John gives us the worry, we'll try one of those. Oh, they're Bacardi. I thought they were vodka. Yeah, well, we'll see. All right. And um, but anyway, like like I was saying before, we streak back and forth. But this year we had the whole gang doing it. Me, and my wife, and uh, cousins and girl made the shots for us as well. How was that experience for you? Still a little nervous that time around? <laughs> Well, I was in, I wasn't in the mood do to do yeah. it to begin with. But, well, you have to. It's our all, tradition every year. You all forced Independence me. of our clothes, you know? I was the first one last year, and then I was the last one this year. The second to last, yeah. But yeah, wife always goes last, seems like. Yeah. But, and, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's when all the neighbors are already alerted to what's going on, though. Well, if, if you're quiet <laughs> enough, they won't notice, but yeah, no. you got to be discreet. And it really helps to do it at night, you know? <laughs> not trying to run in the middle of the day they'll notice us then but and it's fucking hot in here so it's really relieving to i had no problem this time around i'm like it's fucking hot in the, in the house so glad to get out of these clothes <laughs> and enjoy the night breeze on my balls you know <laughs> it's very brisk mm. and uh i gotta say cousin of ours took a nasty spill <laughs> running around the bushes i called right, that one right too. in the street <laughs> called that one yeah this guy was like, he wasn't wearing any shoes though right he, he just went socks naked yeah balls yeah, bouncing so. he and took it, a big fall though he felt like f four feet solid yeah luckily he didn't scratch his uh his his junk or anything but he had some some bad abrasions on his face and hands road rash and then find out later he, that he, he and, could road rash <laughs> find out later he sprained his ankle on the way home so i don't know if he'll be doing that again with us this year but we'll have to give a toast to him little john can you set us off with a little, little uh, shot introduction, please? No shot, shot. 
And there it is. So whenever we hear that, like I said before, it's time for some shots. So let's try the jello shots out right now, see how they are. Red, white, and blue, what are you gonna pick? I'm picking blue one because it looks like the one. Right, how do you even pick these up? Well, it's just because they're, it, it depends what way they're. They're jiggly. Ew. Ew. Alright, let's try it. I to, know, uh, I, I want to know how you get white jello. That's some. If it is jello. <laughs> <laughs> you first, man, I'm a little nervous. Uh, me first? Yeah. Uh, you're nervous? Yeah. Right, no, at the same time. All right. One, All right, one two, three. Do you taste anything? Besides jello? <laughs> oh, it tastes jello. I guess we should try another one then. And I don't like jello that much, so. We're going to do a double shot. You know, maybe that's what we got to do. You think they're uh, that weak? But the, that's the trick, though. Hold on. Well, yeah, yeah, I know many of uh, college students had uh, gotten alcohol poisoning. From yeah, you got, shots. <laughs> you got to make sure you know your limit. They don't, you don't feel it right away. But I'd it'll, rather it'll us up. made them because we don't know how much is in there. It, it's going to creep up on you sometime, so we'll see. All you right. just killed your beer already I gave you, so down that yingling quick. You were busy. I, I was. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I, I got to catch up to you then. The beer. Well, let's talk about our favorite Fourth of July's. Of our existence. Do you have a favorite 4th of July ever? Favorite 4th of July? What was the best time you had? Uh, Come on. I, I guess one of those ones when you were like a, a kid. Like we have like the 4-H by us. And they had to do all the fireworks. And you get ice cream. And you see people like younger kids from your school. And I don't know. Uh -huh. I guess. You mean yeah, what the fireworks are? Yeah. Okay. Young communal Fourth uh, of July. Yeah, you never had the I, ones. I, we we did have a good Fourth of July in Seaside there, getting getting wasted. <laughs> it I, always rolls around us getting wasted. Those, yes, I remember those. What was uh, that one? I can't remember. We we went to Seaside. Yeah, yeah. What did we do then? I don't remember anything that happened. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Yeah, we went to Seaside. We must have stayed at some motel, I guess. And then we, that was it. That's all I know. I remember stuff. I just don't want to talk about it. Talk about, uh, unless you're talking about the ones you went to with uh, our other friend. Wasn't that last year? You guys went to Seaside, the two of you? And uh, the, the cops were banging oh, on the no, door? No, no, yeah, The cops were banging on our, our door. You ever been arrested before? <laughs> it's like, I was like, no, it's the freaking guys next door to us. Yeah, it's not me. Multiple <laughs> blunts. <laughs> I was like, it's not us. I, I couldn't. You know what? I didn't even want to rat them out, though. I was just like, you know what? I smelled it outside. It, it's not us. But it was either but, you but or I them, you know? It, it came and, down and to it. It was them. They were spoken No, I meant it came it down was, to either it's either them or me. You got you. Yeah, yeah. So they but were, I still didn't want to even get bothered by it. But, yeah. yeah. No one ever does when they're trying to enjoy weed by themselves and the, the popo has to ruin a good time. Well, they, and they, were, they were blatantly smoking blunts in the parking lot and blunts in the room and... Blunts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It was so the, whole place, the whole place reeked. <laughs> no wonder the cops showed up. Yeah, yeah. Well, mine, unfortunately. I still did not. I right, still did not direct my attention. I still didn't like say, "Oh, it's them." Uh huh. Because other cops, they could figure that out on their own. I mean, of course, they got to do something. It's better to, to play dumb. Work. Yeah. But uh, you. But uh, my favorite one that I most remember I could say is like uh, when I was thirteen. Back when the economy was doing well, my parents would take us on vacation and stuff. So we we had like a forerunner. You remember the, the the forerunner trucks? Yeah. Like my dad took the put the back down, so we were able to like sit back there with like pillows and uh, blankets and stuff. And we drove from uh, New Jersey all the way to North Carolina, visited some friends in Virginia, picked them up, kept going. I guess they took like the week or two off, so they could afford it. Get down there. Visit some friends that we used to know in New York that moved out there. And uh, remember that 4th of July, not only did we, my first time with sparklers and fireworks and stuff, because they were buying fireworks and were sh shooting off in their backyard, but that was where I saw the amazing movie called Terminator 2, which, uh, you ever see that movie? It was T2? great. T2, yeah. 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 Saw T2. I, I have the first T2 comic book. Yeah. I saw that for uh, um, 4th of July that year, and it was a fucking amazing movie. I remember that, because... But I don't want to spoil the ending, but you have to have seen the movie already, you guys out there. But yeah, that was good, and that kind of ties into today. Are you going to go actually see that new movie 
Terminator oh. Genesis coming out? Oh, Are you yeah, excited yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking confused about like what, how it's going to work. In it? Yeah, but oh, there's going to be a, a a Terminator killing Terminator killing Terminator. <laughs> Yeah, but like you know, this is supposed it, to be. A, it just kills all the Terminators. Well, listen, this is supposed to be a young Sarah Connor, right? So, why didn't she mention any of this that happened to her in like the first Terminator? If it takes place when she's younger, it's uh, just so fucking confusing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they're doing it. That's why. Yeah. You know, I don't. Unless I, like, I don't want to try to figure it out. I'll just watch it. Every time I do that, I try to think is. about it and I figure something out. It's like another another question pops in my head. I'm like, that doesn't make sense because of this, and I'm like, ah, oh, my fucking head's hurting. Fuck it. I don't want to think about it anymore. But, uh... No, and I heard, uh... What's the one dude that runs the army? Oh, uh, come on. Main character. I'm having a loss here. Oh, you Supposedly mean, Supposedly uh, he becomes a robot. Oh, you mean John Connor? Yeah, John yeah, Connor. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly he they, becomes a robot. Yeah, they spoil that kind of in the trailer. They shouldn't yeah, have told it. I don't know why they said that. They were like, something about that he, he becomes a robot, so... Yeah, like they showed in the like trailer. he's like a cyborg or something yeah, to yeah. keep up. They probably send him back from the future... To, no, like, they, can't, they can't send any organic material through time. Well, how did the Terminators get there? Because they're not organic. They're mechanical. Okay. So how do they get back in there? How do they... They just send mechanical and then they become organic. I'm saying maybe that's not John Connor. I'm saying maybe that's like a... One that looks like him that they design oh, okay, in the future. Right, right. Send them back maybe in like time to kill Sarah Connor. But then they realize it's really a cyborg. And then they're like, oh shit, now this one's chasing us. Let's get Arnold back. And then the then they get back to the the first one, and that's why you see the younger Arnold, and then they end up oh, fighting. God. It's it's, it's I'm, weird. I'm, just stop. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, don't even think about it. I actually feel something now. These are these shots are kind of working a little bit. Nah, I, yeah, maybe. You maybe. don't feel a little tingle. Uh, little John, help him out, man. I'm gonna get you pretty fucked up by the time we get to the reviews. At the rate we're going. I'm gonna try a blue one this time. I've I've only been grabbing blue ones. I don't know. See, I take the blue pill. You take the red pill. That's because there's I, more blue ones. I'm I understand to, the matrix to, better. Trying to equal it out on the. All right, here we go. Oh, I definitely need this for these stories I want to get into. Now, like I said, these shots are like. Like the color of the American flag, red, white, white, and blue. And as you know, there's a lot of controversy going on right now about the the Confederate flag, which came up last week, but I didn't really want to talk about it because I thought this would whole, all blow over. But apparently it's uh, still stirring, like, you know, a lot of issues in America. They took Dukes of Hazard off TV. That's exactly what we're going to get into. Oh, that's, that's what it is. All right, so originally I was like, what is your, like, before we get into Dukes of Hazard, what was your opinion of the whole Confederate flag in the first place? With the whole shooting in the South Carolina church and um, now. Well, before any of this, I already agreed that, you know, why don't they have a state flag? And if the state flag has the rebel flag in it, you know, change it. But, you know, I never agreed with with the uh, Confederate flag. I mean, once I was old enough to know what was what, I didn't like the Dukes of Hazard. I was like, that's kind of fucked up. And... I've also gone down south and, and had people be like, well, it just means we're, like, from the south, you know? It's uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, way to keep the war alive, but, you know, oh, I'm a Yankee. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, I, I disagreed with it to the fullest, so it's kind of nice they are uh, doing something about it. Just It seems like overboard because they're doing it all at once now just because I... Yeah, like, that's what I'm confused about. Like, I want to get into this real quick, but uh, before we get into Stu's views about the Dukes of Hazzard, but... One of the things that I want to say is that it seems like it should have. It's weird that all of a sudden, now that this happened in South Carolina, now all of a sudden people are like, "Oh man, like we should have get rid of the flag." Like that should have been an issue for years. Why are you waiting until now to say something about it? Like all people that are open arms about it and complaining, it's I don't get that's the issue. And the other thing I have is if they take all the flags away, does that mean like every racist in the world is gonna be like, "Oh, I want to do something like I want to do something like hate crime," but there's no like you know symbol to tell me what to do. Like how are they gonna? How are they gonna assume like taking the flags away is gonna like change everybody's uh, racist opinions? Well, the sale of Confederate flags went sky high too. When after that happened, because yeah, right they didn't want to lose their flags. Right after it, it's they're gonna like, they're gonna stop making them. Yeah, it's gonna be like a memorabilia, like in the future. <laughs> like people are like we used to be able to be racist. Look at this. Now we can't. We have to hide our racism, but that not back then. Can't <laughs> buy a rebel flag at the mall anymore. Damn it. Mm-hmm. 
So that's my issue. I'm like, they shouldn't have really like make, blow this out of proportion. And I was like, I really don't. I think it'll blow over. And I, I don't really don't care. They're not really mess with me when I see a Confederate flag. I just go the opposite direction all the time. So I always thought that it meant like you, you know, you're a racist if you have one or you believe in that racist things. Yeah. When you much. see one, so I just yeah. I just avoid it. It's not in my view. It's not in my. It's not. Uh, it's not like um, interfering with my life anyway. So I just turn the other cheek. Yeah, it's more and, so when you see them up here. Where we're in New Jersey, we're not in the South. So. Yeah, until this story broke, which we're gonna get into Still now. Still bother for, me seeing them in the South though. Then this story broke, which is for Stu's views topic. TV Land has pulled reruns of the Dukes of Hazard, and I got this story from the New York Post. The latest victim of the growing controversy over the Confederate flag is the 1980s TV series The Dukes of Hazard. A TV Land spokesperson confirmed Tuesday that the network has pulled reruns of the series from its schedule, which has been airing twice a day. The network declined to comment on why the episodes were removed, but the Southern set show has come under fire recently for its depiction of the Confederate flag, which is emblazed on the roof or hood of the Duke's Boy signature 1969 orange Dodge Charger. The General Lee. Yes. Also called the General Lee. Yeah, they say that. Warner Brothers all owns, which owns Dukes of Hazzard last week, halted production on toy replicas of the car dubbed the General Lee. That followed moves by other retailers such as Walmart and eBay to stop selling items bearing the stars and bars after the, de- the deadly shooting at the Charleston, South Carolina in June. The church. A change.org petition, petition telling Viacom and Warner Brothers to stop banning Dukes of Hazzard has collected nearly 400 signatures si- since launching on Tuesday. Dukes of Hazard originated, aired on CBS from 1979 to 1985, and followed the adventures of the cousins, Bo and Luke Duke, uh, Bo, Derek, and Luke Derek. I thought the last name was Dukes, but all right, whatever. Maybe that's a typo. Who raced around that town on their trusty stock car? So this is my issue. I grew up on that show. I loved that show. Really? And honestly, the show itself. Because I was a kid. Look at 1959. No, 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 well, I was upset when they came out with the remake. I, I was, oh, I was yeah, saying, yeah. why are they going to do that? That's freaking racist. That was your problem? <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. that it was that it sucked? <laughs> oh, oh that, that that movie sucked? Well, Johnny Knoxville is a good actor, but... Uh, okay. I don't, I'm not going to... We, I, 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 yeah, we I, here I, at uh, Hybrid Radio, see it to begin with. As, as Shadow Reviews, do not express the same com- uh, opinions as my co-host here <laughs> when it comes to saying Johnny Knoxville is a good actor. That was your words, not mine. Well, he's himself. <laughs> Exactly. But I love the show, and I'll be honest with you, I don't watch it like religiously now, the reruns. Like I see it on, I watch it a little bit, I'm like, ah, oh, I remember. Nostalgia passes after like five minutes, I turn the channel. So why do I care? I, I don't know. It's just, at this point now, it's, it's a, something dear to my heart. And like we said earlier, this now is getting kind of out of control with banning everything because that kind of like is the memorabilia of the show. No, I thought that was long overdue. Oh, so you're four? Yeah. Okay. So that means you're happy they took it off, you're saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that was Stu's views. I unfortunately have to disagree, but at the same time, I guess you didn't grow up on the show or didn't like it as much. I just thought it was nah, cool to see like a car much. jumping in the air and stuff like that. Yeah. It's very cartoonish, and that's what, it, at that age, I really loved about it. So, but at the same time, you out there, if you're upset about it, just go get the DVDs and watch them that way before they take those off the shelf. You know? Well, you know, you still have freedom of speech. It, it'll still be around. They're just not going to, you know, uh, promote it. Right. But, but you can still get the DVDs at your local store as unless uh, those stores are going to pull them off the shelves too. But DVDs? People buy those? <laughs> How else? What are you going to do with them? Eat them? Yeah, that's what they do. I, they I, thought, them. I thought everyone got all their movies through the internet streaming. Uh, probably not Dukes of Hazard now with that going down. I'm sure all the streaming services will like pull it as well because they wanna, they wanna. Because um, then it's worth something. What's people, the word? People they will actually seeking it out. It's called damage control. They want to get out out the way too. Now, if you agree with that, I unfortunately feel like you're gonna agree with this story too. In more Dukes of Hazard news, General Lee, which we were talking about earlier, the U.S. a U.S. golfer by the name of Bubba Watson, is to paint over the Confederate flag of the car from the Dukes of Hazard. As part of the growing backlash against Rebel Symbol. So he's a, the top golfer who believes the car, who owns the car, announced the move by tweeting that he believes all men are created equal. There the had fact, to be more than one. He owns, a, he actually owns the, the, the uh, only, the, the original car. car. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. There's got to be more than one. 
That's, that's what you take it from this? You think it took all those jumps and no problem? Well, they probably made... The, all those ones are broken, but they, they had like one that by the time the show it's ended, the they, probably, left. they probably put it on for auction and he bought it. Because he's a golfer, he probably can afford it. But anyway, like, you know, the flag... He said that he believes all men are created equal. The flag divides opinions in the U.S., symbolizing racism to his critics and the South heritage to his defenders. And many of the states now display the flag outside government buildings, and it also appears on number plates and is sold as a bumper sticker. Watson, the third-ranking golfer in the world and two-time Masters champion, said on Twitter that he would cover the flag on the car with the United States Stars and Stripes flag instead. All men are credit equal. I believe that. So I will be painting the American flag over the roof of the General Lee, he says, referring to the vehicle by the name, the Duke's, uh, nickname on the Duke's Hazard. So Washington acquired, Watson is one acquired the car back in 2012, according to the Washington Post, which is where I got this story from as well. No, I got the story from BBC News, sorry. You could buy mini and it's got a British flag on the top. <laughs> you can go all the way back to the Revolutionary War. So you're for him painting the American flag over that and just... In like a, I guess uh, destroying no I, uh, memorabilia yeah, he, like he that. Doesn't, yeah, I don't think you have to go that far. I think he's honestly doing it now for publicity because yeah, if it really bothers you, like, why are you waiting until now to say something? Like like, it's almost like it's counterproductive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like the opposite then. Yeah. It's like why did he wait till now to do something if it really bothers you? It's like we woke up one day. Oh shit. That symbolizes racism. I'm gonna paint over it and make you're, sure you're I. Not gonna, you're not gonna knock down the pyramids because they had slaves. Yeah, why don't, that's a good point. Why don't they do that? But they have to wait till someone takes so someone kills someone with like a pyramid. Then <laughs> then they're like, oh shit, we gotta get rid of all the pyramids. You know, backlash. We gotta we gotta have the knee jerk reaction immediately. Right. I guess. Yeah. Well, that's the bullshit that's going on in our in our country. But I got more bullshit for you. Let's get to a fluff story now for to finish off of Stu's views. Benefer has come to an end. Benefer? Benefer. Oh, really? I thought that was over a long time ago. No, you know Benefer Part 2 has ended. Oh, oh they, so they broke up, got back together? No, man. <laughs> ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner, not Jennifer oh, Lopez. Oh, it's a different Jennifer. You didn't know he got married 10 years ago? Uh, yeah, that's why I said I thought that was over a long time ago. Nah, they just ended their 10-year marriage. So Benefer 2 is over. The couple were married for 10 years and have marked their anniversary on Monday. So they said, after much thought and careful consideration, we have made the difficult decision to divorce. Hold on a second. It's better. I had a little snot in my nose. The couple tells people in a joint statement, we go, we go forward with love and friendship for one another and the commitment to co-parenting our children, whose privacy we ask. Uh, to be respected during this difficult time. This will be our only comment on this private matter. Thank you for your understanding. Gardner is 43, Affleck's 42, intends on to seek mediation. The two are parents of three kids, Violet, nine, Serafina, six, and Samuel, three. The couple awful, often enjoy family time together in home at home in Los Angeles, where they are frequently spotted in car on carpools, coffee, and after-school activities, outings with their broad. Are they having a conscious uncoupling? <laughs> As opposed to an unconscious one? <laughs> but the marriage was also the subject of scrutiny over the years. In t- 2014 interview in, in Style, Garner spoke to the, of the couple's mindful, quotes marriage, noting that their relationship was no longer in the courtship phase, but she still was fine with it. She says, you can't expect to be courted all the time and I don't want to be court to court him right now I don't have the energy but we're definitely in the very mindful place where we're making an effort to be together do things at at the t- same time and be loving Affleck spoke often spoke of how much Garner helped stabilize his life after it had been t- come tabloid fo- had become tabloid fodder in the years following the 2004 split from Jennifer Lopez which you remember so he says, my wife is definitely around then. Affleck told Playboy in 2013. So she proved he's not a lazy pothead. <laughs> Getting to know her, falling in love with her, and being connected with her gave me a foundation to reach out and say, okay, I'm going to do Hollywoodland, which that was a bad move. I'm going to direct Gone Baby Gone. 
Affleck said, those were the steps forward I needed to put positive stuff on the, on the board. The two first met as co-stars in the set of 2001's Pearl Harbor, which was not only disaster in 2042, but also disaster at the box office. Well, I should say it probably did well, but it was definitely a disaster for um, Michael Bay's career. Then they rec reconnected after making 2003's film Daredevil and started dating soon after. Broke up, he started dating the other Jennifer Lopez. Well, Jen the other Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. They broke up. Now he dated this. So I think he should stop with the Jennifers. What do you think? I don't yeah. think Jennifers are working out for him. Yeah, it's, that's weird. <laughs> I I've dated girls with similar, like, no, no, identical tattoos, but never the same name. I, I don't know which is weirder. Are you a fan of his uh, his work? Because they're missing all these shitty movies that he was in. Are you excited for the uh, Batman movie next year? Um, no. Uh, I mean, if if any movie does not need to be redone, it's Batman. You didn't say that before when they redid it with Dark Knight. You could probably like that, didn't you? Um, yeah, granted, you know what? Yeah, okay, it's a catch-22 because you watch them, they're still good. And it's like, yay, Batman. It's like a different Batman. But, no. It's like they really shouldn't be doing that. They should really, like, try to come up with some other character. Yet, there is Ant-Man coming out. Yeah, so I'm you little, think they I'm should just to see Ant -Man. take every single superhero as obscure as possible and make a movie about it? Nah, just not so many. I mean, why are it's, there not no new Superman movies? I mean, one, There was, and it was shitty. Oh, yeah. It came yeah. out two years ago. <laughs> okay. And they're right. making a sequel. They're actually going to take Man Superman. They're going to make Man of Steel 2? Yeah, it's the Batman-Superman thing. I like how in the dark you are with all this stuff. You didn't know that the team got together? No, no, I saw it. I just forgot about it. Yeah. That's what's going to be. that. You're not waiting for that epic battle between yeah, Superman but, and uh, Batman? Yeah, but see, okay, Spider-Man had one group of sequels, one gr uh, two groups of sequels. Mm -hmm. Right, or or they might have no. They might have. They made the first three with Tobey Maguire. Then they made the two with uh, what's his name uh, Andrew Garfield. And now that that didn't do as well. That, they, that's the kind of things they I got like rid of him. Now gonna like, do it again. It's it's like a completely different producer, and it's like somebody else's completely different perspective. Yeah, on it's a the reboot. Character. Yeah, no. It's they want to take something yeah, that was you done. You can't do it over and over and over and over and over again. But they can make it better every Batman. time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they get better effects, uh, you know. Let's just say that Stu doesn't give a fuck about this uh, this divorce, but we're on a totally different topic now. Uh, but let's yeah. keep going. <laughs> you do, you don't care about the benefit split, right? Uh, uh, he's got money. He'll hook up whatever. He'll find, find something. Find yeah. a normal girl, somebody that's not a celebrity. Someone not named Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, going on. You don't like remakes or reboots. Let's really get to the the heart of your problem. You hate. When they take a, a franchise that's already been done and they try to revamp it to for modern for the modern age, you don't like that. No. So you're all. So you basically. Well, uh, to to an ex extent, if you're doing it over and over and over again, you know you can't have five different productions of Batman. It's Why not? Uncalled for. What do you? When they are when our kids get older and look at this um, Dark Knight movie, they're like, this shit is. is it's just not that well, good. Why is there not a Slender Man movie? <laughs> not yet. Is he a superhero? What, why are we getting off topic now? He's not a superhero, is he? No, he's an internet mythos. Right. Okay. So you want to... Is that what you're pleading for Hollywood to do? Do a Slender Man movie? Sure. It'd be better than another <laughs> Batman. What would the plot be? Just You're walking the woods and you're just being followed <laughs> by a tall man? The end. <laughs> wow, that was a deep movie. <laughs> No, there's, How can they stretch that movie out? There's a little more to it. You know what? If they can make a movie about the battleship and suits, suits and ladders, they can make a movie about that game too. So, but then kids might start killing other people. So and they gotta ban those. That, that was know? another news story. Yeah, we'll get into that another time. I guess I didn't hear about it. What Slender Man killings? I might have not heard. I might have heard about that. All right. Yeah. What some, happened? Some girls killed some people. Oh, Young oh yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, that was and earlier. They, and they said Slender Man made them do it. So that's that's their that's everyone's cop out to get that insanity uh, yeah. plea. It was Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I thought I thought I was a level four cleric. And they're like, that's it. All eight. And I bashed him with a mace. 
<laughs> no more dice with more than like five sides. We're banning all the dice with more than five sides. <laughs> <laughs> all Funyun and uh, Mountain Dew has been banned. Wait, more than more than five sides. That means you can't have a six sided die. You can have a regular die then. Well, more yeah. than, more than six. You mean? But yeah, that's what I'm saying. More than six. All right. Like oh yeah, five. more than yeah. That's right. They have six sides. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. So they have to ban everything with more than six sides. <laughs> Not the twenty sided die. No. <laughs> I bet you will care then. I bet you'll care then. What what are you getting up for? What do you want? Uh, to... I thought I heard Little Wayne. Little Wayne's not here, but Little John is. Sorry, Little John. Little Wayne brings the scissor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna try a red. Building my belly though. Mm. We're gonna get into the uh, album reviews now. Let me just get this out of my throat. All right, let's start off with the uh, album by Tyga called The Gold Album, colon, 18th Dynasty. Now, Tyga is a member of the uh, Young Money, and his name stands for Thank You, God, Always. You know, Young Money, uh, Lil Wayne, who you mentioned before, his super group. So he's a member of them. And uh, you might remember him from this terribly bland song, Rack City, from a few years back, when which featured a very... Uh, overused uh, southern rap beat and extremely repetitive lyrics. Um, so if I want to get into the little backstory on this album, what's happening with the, the label Cash Money Records is an issue with Baby or Birdman. Birdman is having a falling out with uh, Lil Wayne. Yeah. And uh, all the label, people on the label are starting to like jump ship or their albums are being pushed back because all this like uh, this fighting and uh, I don't want to say controversy, but disru- what do you want to say? Disruption? Disagreement that they're having. So, this album was supposed to come out back in November, and this is his fourth album, and it's been delayed three times before being released exclusively on Spotify a couple weeks ago. And I also want to mention that Kanye West is the executive producer on this album. So, um, you can tell when you listen to some, like, the opening, anyway. Some of the songs definitely have that, like, Kanye West, like, uh, like overproduced, like, grandioso, like, production. And also, I want to mention a little bit later, we'll talk about the use of auto-tunes as well. That, that explains a little. Right. So, one of the songs I want to really get into <laughs> is the second song on the album, which was, which was aptly named Motherfucker. Which, similar to, like, a fourth grader who discovered profanity, Tiger uses the word fucka to the end every sentence over and over and over. It's very clever. And I expect a little more from someone who's been working in the game this long, but, I mean, what can you do? Obviously, he thinks that word is funny, so he might think we'll think it's funny, too. Not me. And then with the track, Shaka, Shaka, Shaka Zulu. Shut your fucking mouth, Uncle Fucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somehow he missed the boat on that joke. It's, it's kind of, a, what would you say, like uh, 15 years ago. So the song, the track Shaka Zulu, he, he continues to be overly repetitive. We get it. I won't tell anyone the babysitter is dead. How many fucking times are you going to say it? And like I said before, I want to talk about his uh, his auto-tune using. Like, you know, uh, Kanye West does it way too much, as well as uh, his, pre- his predecessor, whose name I can't remember right now, uh, T-Pain. That's it. So for some reason, similar to the motherfucker thing, Tiger has not get the joke that that shit's played. So he does it anyway, and all three of the the songs where he uses a lot of auto tunes, they're very dull tracks. Like I said, like one, like I say, all three of them are done for the dullest track, which is called "Down for Me," which is I want to say auto tunes, overproduction, and lots of repetition. Now I want to say this guy cannot carry an album for shit. He needs some talent, talented guest stars badly. Even if you got two chains to show up, it would be somewhat of an improvement. And you know how much I hate two chains. So finally, after seven bullshit tracks, the song Wham comes on. And this song has a pretty sick beat, but the lyrics are subpar as usual. Uh, Stu, you're awful quiet over there. I, I can't wait to hear you must have loved this, but let me go on. But oh well, I guess you can't really have uh, good beats and um, good lyrics. On an album like this. And then another song on there called Pleaser. 
has that old school like a uh, West Coast gangster beat. Not only is this uh, the highlight, but it's also a song that if uh, in another song on the album called Hollywood Niggas, if if they had an instrumental to the song, I'm sure Ice Cube or even the Dog Pound could have easily made these a classic song. Now you remember how I said that Tiger could have used some uh, guest stars in this album. Well, I gotta say you gotta be careful what you wish for, cause Lil Wayne eventually shows up, or should I say, phones in, on a track called "For My Dogs," and I know he doesn't write before he records, but it's never been more obvious than on this song. The hook that he delivers is even beneath him. So it's very apparent why this album was pushed back so much. But what I don't understand is why it came out at all. Tiger is from Compton, so it would I would have suggested he work with someone like Dr. Dre next time, but. And they would have made like a decent record, but then again, that would have been a waste of even Dr. Dre's talents. So I, you can tell already, I think this is the album definitely you can skip. Stu, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I also thought to skip. Um, Hold on. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, yeah, I don't know. Kind of had a... I, you know, when they say like punk rock is an attitude, it, I guess this album... It, it, wrapped with a, an attitude and it just wasn't an attitude that I was interested in so I mean, the whole album kind of suck but any songs that you that I didn't mention or anything that you heard that I didn't that you should mention on this review that you thought you liked or didn't like is there anything that you liked about it anything that I liked about it uh it ended <laughs> yeah um yeah it was fucking it, a I, chore getting to that I thought album. he had an interesting way of uh, you know, actually having uh, uh, rhymes that w- were all cognitive, like they, it did all fit together. It wasn't just like random words or, or like being creative or whatever. So it was like a, a logical uh, progression when when he put songs together. So I gotta disagree with that. I don't. I didn't hear any progression in his rhymes at all. It, it didn't seem like he even is making like I don't want to like quote anything he said, but he'll say like you know, this girl like dick, like dick. That's right. She's like dick. Like that's all you can think of. Like you know, is is the point? Is the do you think the word dick is I'm so funny? I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah, is the is the word so funny that you think, oh, we're gonna let that pass? You know, I'm not even rhyming it with anything. You know, that's like like that was just pure laziness, and it's like I don't I, like if you really want to put your middle finger to like you know Birdman and the whole label, you got to come out hard, and he just did not even try. So, fuck that. But. What did you guys think of the album? If you want to give us your, if you heard it, you want to give us your opinion, let us know in the comment section, or you can send us an email as well. All right, I think I'm feeling a little bit, but I need some more. Little shots. Let's go with the. Uh, we're almost out of these. No, I'm kidding. We got plenty to go. You should do two at one time. I don't. <laughs> the third one I will, but not this one. I want to I wanna, uh, be able to at least get to the finish line. Hmm. She did a good job. They are flavorful. Yes. And I, I normally do not like Jello. <laughs> I think it's the, the strawberry Jello really shines. Bill Cosby would be proud if he doesn't go to jail for uh, molesting children. Children or girls, I should say. Oh. We should uh, we should send these to him. He liked them jigglers a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jello you take jigglers. a little bit of the pudding and then you put it in the jello and you touch the girls' asses. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Next review, Breaking Benjamin. It's a new album called The Dark Before Dawn. Who are Breaking Benjamin, you might ask? Do you ask that, Stu? Ask that. Uh, uh, who? Are Breaking Benjamin. Oh. Uh, is Breaking Benjamin. All right. They formed in 1998. They're an alternative metal band, by the way. Then They released their debut album, Saturate, in 2002, featuring the hit song, Polyamorous, and my personal favorite song, Skin. So after three follow-up albums, in 2011, former members Aaron Fink and Mark Komple- Ka- Klepeski... Klepeski allowed their record company to release a new version of the hit song Blow Me Away, as well as a greatest hits album, without informing lead singer Benjamin Burnley or management. 
They were offered a hundred million, a hundred thousand dollars to do so. By the way, they believed they had permission to do so since they the band had been on hi- hiatus for two years prior. So by 2013, they resolved their issues and Burnley retained the rights to continue breaking the band under the name Breaking Benjamin. And then in 2014, Burnley were for, so those guys left the band. It was just him by himself. So then, 2014, Burnley reformed the band with all new members. And this year released their fifth album. So, there's only one original member, right? Yeah, on this album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why, well, why are they holding on to the name? They he s- is. They sound he very wanted. similar to the previous albums. That's what I'm getting into. You, to be honest, all right. You can't really tell that they have new members in the band at all because they sound the exact same on this as their last two or three albums. Like the song Failure, which is the single right now, could have been released on an older record and it would have fit just fine. But then on the track Breaking the Cycle, the Silence, they do something completely different by sounding like Tool. I remember you were saying that he has, they have, was that the song yeah, they, you were talking about? Yeah, they do have like a Tool slash Quicksand kind of sound sometimes. Okay. Yeah, like the one song, like I remember you were saying that, then I'm like, this sounds like their older stuff. And then when that song I just mentioned came on, I'm like, I I see what he's talking about. So Burnley does crowbar in some obnoxious hardcore screams. But the guitarist and the clean vocals on this is a dead ringer for like a B-side Tool song. And then uh, another song on this album called Bury Me Alive. It's kind of like a bounce number that won't disappoint any Breaking Benjamin fans, but provided there are any fans still around, you know, they would like that song. <clears throat> Stu, want to add anything before I... Did anything uh, move you on this album at all? Yes or no? No, not really. Okay. I, I found it, uh, I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe it would have been a little bit better if they uh, picked their better songs and made the album a little smaller. But then again, I mean... It's only 12 tracks, though. Yeah, it's only 12 tracks, though. Maybe maybe it would have been better on a 7-inch, you know, four tracks. (laughs) So, cool. So, what you guys at home are going to get is a a review from, I guess you're a novice. This is your first time listening to a whole album. Yeah. To someone like myself that's heard them all. Then you're going off my review to the... You, I was saying that all the songs sound the same and they're interchangeable with all their older stuff, but one song on the album called Ashes of Eden, they changed things up a bit. On this one, it's like a slow acoustic ballad with him moaning, Stay with me, don't let me go. <laughs> with backing violins and all that shit. Not only did this make song make me want to puke, but it's out of place with all the rest of the hard rock album. So, nothing more I can say here. Like I said before, Breaking Benjamin has made this pretty much the same album about three times so far. So their fans pretty much own this album already. But if you're still listening to these guys, you probably are still listening to Trust Company, Trap, and Smile at the Soul. So living in the early 2000s shouldn't be a problem for you. But for me, I said this album you can pretty much download. Stu? Uh, I said skip. Wow, okay, you hated it more than I did. Why would you say that? I don't know. You know like, yeah, a lot of it did sound the same. Right. And and it wasn't, you know, if if I wanted to listen to Tool, I'd listen to Tool. <laughs> if I wanted to listen to Quicksand, I would, you know, and they, they I don't know, it was just a, a blend of different styles, and I didn't think that it came together to be anything too unique. You know, I I would go back on my, my review and say that as well, but I'm going to stick to the fact that I think if you never heard this man before, it's, they're not worth your money. So maybe if you want to just download it and see if you're into it, and then if you stupidly want to waste your money and buy the same album over and over again, then go right ahead. But I think if you get the first album and this one, you're set. You got yeah, everything you, you were, need. If you were already a fan, I'm sure you'd probably like it. Yeah. yeah. But this is the first I've ever heard of. Yeah. Them. It's just well, like... I've heard of them. Not, not my whole them. issue is, like, yeah, they didn't. they stayed true to their sound, but... At the same time, if you're going to get new people in the band, like, what was the point of getting rid of the old people? Just work out your differences and keep doing the same thing over and over again. Got new people just doing the exact same thing over again and trying to relive the early 2000s. But that's just me, and we like to hear what you think. So if you heard this album and you liked it or hated it or whatever, just send us a comment or send us an email as well. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Time for us to do a double now. Get through this final review here. Little John, set us off. I'm 
I'm gonna do a blue and a red one. Uh, happy Independence Day to me. One. You got two already? I take one at a time. You did a real double shot. All right, our final review. Too time consuming eating them things. Yeah. Well, makes it show longer at least. Our final review from a band called Man Overboard, and their album is called Heavy Love. They're a New Jersey pop punk band blending upbeat pop music with the uh, motions of emo groups like The Promise Ring. And their name comes from a Blink-182 song of the same na name. Uh, you obviously heard that Man Overboard song if you're a Blink-182 fan or a casual fan because it's been on the radio. This is their fourth album, which was produced by Descendants drummer Bill Stevenson. Really? Yeah. Wow. But uh, I'll let you go first on this one. What? Yes. Why yeah. do I have to go first? Because <laughs> I'm going to switch it up for the fans at home, you know, or wherever you're listening. Um... You know, there were like uh, three or four songs that I really liked. Um, actually, let me... What was the... Uh, what was your first oh, impression first when it started, though? Were you like, this is going to suck? Because it was well, pretty much a really poppy intro. I got a... Uh, the first couple songs were video as well. Okay. So it was like instantly I got to see what they look like. I was like, who's that nerdy lead singer guy? <laughs> and, uh, and I was... And, and you know... The, the bassist, I was like, all right, he's a little cooler looking. I guess they, like, you know, trade back and forth to, to, to make something work. Uh-huh. So, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so what songs did you like, do you think? That's what I'm trying to okay. find. I'm trying to find a song list. i got to go through my email here. Because uh, I know remember the songs I enjoyed. Here we go. Uh, just I have a feeling I know what songs you enjoyed. You didn't like when they were being like poppy. You like when they were really yeah, aggressively yeah. punk yeah, rock. Exactly. Yeah. So the first song, I'll, I'll I'll go a little bit. The first song I heard, which uh, kind of got my interest, was the third track called Reality Check, which I started to realize that this band sounds like the lead singer of Red Jumpsuit Apparatus is fronting the band Sum 41. At least by that point, it's slightly more punk than pop. So I was like, all right, this is cool. But then they pull out a song called Cliffhanger, which is like a straight, Fast paced, like punk rock, yeah, yellow card. That song was good. Yellow card, like Ocean's Avenue kind of song. The sound like it came out of there. That, now, uh, this is the kind of punk rock I really can get into, that kind of song. But they don't only do that, you know. They don't even do like, they even do like, like, uh, slower song. Like, they have like a kind of Weezer esque, bouncy, buzz guitar song and one song called She's in Pictures. You know, that you can, so you can, you can tell who their influences are, but. What they do is they're pulling from so many different sources and they put them all together, you know, so it's not so bad, you know. It's not like, yo, you you just want to be exactly like this band. They're try they're basically taking little ele elements from everything different and putting it into one. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, I really like the track uh, Invisible. Invisible, okay. That, that was also really good. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, uh, these guys kind of remind me of a, a band that I saw at 67 Handy Street in New Brunswick when I was much younger. Um, so, you know, it's it's nothing brand new to, to combine these styles, but it was uh, Weston. Weston. I yeah, remember them. They, I did not like those guys. You didn't like them? No. No? I don't know. They, they opened for Goldfinger. They were way more pop poppier than punk to me. Really? When, they, when I saw them in the late 90s, but... Oh, well, I, I saw them in... Yeah, I guess it was uh, mid '90s, probably '95, something around there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what about one of the song? My I have some complaints though. I will say one of the things I didn't like is that uh, some of the lyrics are vocals are a little too whiny with the song like anything, but with the but with the, the great backing vocals on the song for Jenny. And they really ended strong with the last song, A Love That I Can't Have. I say Heavy Love is a remarkable improvement from their last album. Because I do, I do have their last album, which didn't really move me. So I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again. Maybe I should give it another chance. But this was like an instant like hit for me. So I would say this is an album you should definitely go buy. Stu? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a download fan. Okay. Why? Down, download it. Enjoy it. 
They don't earn. They didn't. They haven't earned your hard-earned money yet, huh? Nah. All right. All right. Well, what can you do? You know. So, but then again, if you guys heard the album, you want to tell us what you think, send us a comment or email us and let us know what you think about it. So we like to hear your opinions as long as you agree with us. So this is the point where we check the emails and I see that we don't have any. So anything you want to talk about, Stu, before we get out of here? No emails, really? Again. Let's talk about anybody listening, send anything. <laughs> We, we like insults. It yeah, I will let them know. Something. At least if they want to give us some topics or anything to talk about, I'll, I'll yeah, let them sure. know when the outro. outro. But, uh, oh, I want to mention also, um, aren't you excited? I meant to, we meant to, should talk about this earlier, but I'm going to actually be interviewing uh, the Bouncing Souls, a uh, New ah. Jersey band, next week, which we'll put up on our thing as well. Yeah, I, and my friend over here, Stu, is a big Bouncing Souls fan. So, long term fan. Long term fan, yeah. Yeah. I, you don't obviously all, collect all their way, music. All the way back to sixth grade. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that was early early nineties. Yeah, so make sure you guys listen to that when we post it. But uh I guess we're gonna get out of here now. I think we I feel that the jello shots kicking in, so I wanna Woo I before I start slurring and talking about nonsense, let's get out of here. There we go. So if you wanna contact us Go to NJHireRadio at gmail.com. Or you can check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash NJHireRadio. Post some stuff on there or look at all the stuff we're going up, what's going on with us. The webpage too. Webpage too, which is uh, NJHireRadio.net. Stu works really hard on the site when I can get him to get his lazy ass to do something. So don't let it all go to waste. Go check out what he's doing. In the meantime, this is Jarrell. And my host, co-host, too, saying good night, and we'll talk to you next time. Say bye.